Okay, now that we've got the machine up to temperature, um, we're doing a full oil change, filter and everything. So the first thing we have to do is drop the main skid plate. Uh, it's 11 bolts, if I counted correctly. They are 10 millimeter uh, socket. It's a 10, 10 millimeter socket is what you're going to use. Okay, now it gives us access to the oil filter and we can go ahead and drain it. The next thing we're going to do is remove this uh, service panel out of the cargo area. There's five of these little quarter turn twist pins. Take those out. The panel just slides right out. Take a rag and clean off the the dipstick for the, uh, the oil reservoir. I'll go ahead and take that out. Next thing is going to be taking the uh, crankcase cap off. Okay, the, the cap for the crankcase is a little bit harder to get to. This is on the driver's side. It's on the number one cylinder. It's all the way at the front of the motor. Okay, the engine drain bolt, it's gonna be too hard for me to film it, actually pulling the bolt out and draining it and all that, because I just don't have room for the camera and the, and the drain pan and all that stuff at one time, and the light and everything. But underneath the machine, um, here's, the, uh, here's the filter right here, the oil filter. There is right there. So what do we got? We got four bolts that all look similar. This one here um, has got a, it's still hot. This one here has got a, a triangle next to it, and it's also got a, 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 a gasket on it, like a washer. It uses a five millimeter uh, hex, hex uh, Allen key, so that's how we'll take it out. I'll go ahead and do that, drain everything, and then we'll go drain the oil tank. So while we're down here pulling the, uh, the drain plug out, we'll go ahead and pull the oil filter out. It's a canister style filter. If you get a 65 millimeter um, oil filter cap wrench, <clears throat> that'll pull it off. To drain the oil tank, uh, this is the, the bottom of the oil tank. There's three bolts, there's one here, there's one here, one here. It's a 10 millimeter socket. Remove that cover and then your drain plug is right here. That is a 12 millimeter socket. And then in theory, it'll just go in the drain pan. Once the oil tank is done draining, you can put the uh, drain bolt back in. I've already reinstalled the drain bolt in the crank case, and I've already reinstalled the oil filter. Um, they were a pain to get to, so it was easier just to do it than film it. Um, I'll show you the specs, uh, the torque specs on all of these in just a second. But we'll torque this back down. 
And then we can reinstall the cover. Oh, and just for fun, I did put the uh, drain pan on the floor and it does drain directly from the plug straight between the tire and the, uh, the swing arm, A arm, theoretical trailing arm, whatever we've decided to call it. Um, probably just throw a rag on top of the trailing arm for the little bit of splatter you get, uh, but it, it does work. Here's the torque specs on, uh, on all the different stuff. The uh, engine oil filter gets torqued down to uh, 12 foot-pounds. The, uh, the drain bolt for the oil tank, that torques down to 12 foot-pounds as well. And then the, uh, the drain bolt for the crankcase, that torques down to 7.2 foot-pounds. I actually did all mine in newton meters just because it was easier to do it on my, uh, on my torque wrench. Um, this all comes from the, the factory Yamaha service manual. Yamaha sucks ass so bad they won't give us a PDF file. I paid $70 for this stupid paperweight. I'd be happy to give Yamaha $70 if they'd let me have it in an electronic form. Who the fuck uses paper anymore? I mean, really? The filter I'm going to be using is a genuine Yamaha filter. 5GH-13440-50. Uh, I chose the Yamaha filter because it was convenient. I was at Yamaha picking it up and it's not that much money. And in theory, Yamaha has some kind of baffle in it or something that keeps pressure on the engine or something, I don't know. Anyway, that's what I'm putting in there. We are now ready to fill the oil tank back up. I have reinstalled the crankcase uh, filler plug. Also, whenever I put the, uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, whenever I put the oil filter in, I filled the oil filter up prior to installing it into the filter, into the engine. Uh, the service manual has a quote-unquote tip it says to install two quarts of oil I'm sorry two liters of oil which is effectively two quarts of oil and then start the motor rev it three to five times and then finish it off with the other 0.7 liters which is what ours is called for since we did an actual filter change as well I'm using a Yamalube 20W50 so we'll, uh, we'll get all that uh, put in the engine, get the engine revved up, then we'll top it off and check the level. Alright, so I'm, I'm topping it off after I uh, put in my two liters. I'll tell you this, the thing sounds like hammered shit when you first start it for about, I don't know, a second and a half, two seconds. I'm assuming while it's priming the oil pump up. Um, I actually tried before I started the engine, actually fired it. I actually, there's some, I've, there's a, been a little bit of talk on the forum about maybe pulling the spark plug wires and trying to prime the motor that way without actually firing the motor. I actually tried that. Um, pulled the plug wires, cranked it over a few times, seeing if that would prime the motor up. And then I put the plug wires back on and fired it up and it, it still sounded terrible. So just don't be alarmed whenever you, uh, you fire it up and it, it sounds, sounds rough, but, uh, it seems to be normal for whatever normal is. Everybody, uh, everybody reports it doing it. So, I got my oil level set. Um, I can tell you that the book says for a full oil change with filter, it should be 2.7 liters. I ended up at well over three quarts, which is much more than 2.7 liters. Uh, as far as how to check your oil, read your owner's manual, and however you understand it, that's the way you're going to do it. Um, it's a pretty stupid process. I mean, it's just, it's, I don't get it. But what I, I'll tell you what I ended up doing was I just, I warmed the engine up to temperature that I let it sit for a couple of minutes and then uh, checked the oil level with a dipstick not screwed in. And that was what I ended up going with. Uh, so anyway, once you've got your oil levels, you're happy with that. Put your, uh, the cover over in the cargo area, put that back on. Uh, put your skid plate back on and you should be good to go.